It's Nicola here at the Disasters Emergency Committee at the beginning of the second week of our East Africa Crisis Appeal. And I'm thrilled to announce that uh, we have just found out that we have raised 30 million pounds. 30 million in one week, that's absolutely amazing. Thank you so much to the British public for your huge generosity. As you know, the scale of the crisis is immense, so we still need your donations um, to keep flowing in. Um, and to talk more about um, the situation in Somalia and South Sudan, I'm joined now by Kate Holt. Welcome, Kate. Thank you. Kate is a photographer, and her and her team have been working with us in South Sudan and in Somalia, taking some of the photos that you've seen in our communications materials that we've been sending out. And Kate is just back from Somalia. She's going to talk us through now some photos that um, have appeared in The Guardian recently. So Kate, this first photo that we're looking at, tell us what that's about. This photograph was actually taken back in 2008 in the port of Basasso. It shows a lot of goats and sheep being transported over to the Middle East for Eid. And this was the way Somaliland and Puntland both made their, their money. People would breed sheep and goats and then they would sell them to the Middle East before Eid. And they would go in thousands and thousands in ships over, um, mm. over to the Middle East. People would breed them all year, they'd sell them, they'd generate incomes, they'd get a lump sum yeah. of cash, they'd pay their children's school fees, they'd pay their medical expenses, they'd restock their, their herds. This year, for the first time, they aren't going to be able to do that because the majority of their animals have died. As Raggy Omar stated in his ITN report, I think about 10 million out of 18 yeah. million heads have already died in this drought. Here's a photograph showing what we saw um, back in early March, these are herds that have literally died of starvation and died of lack of water. And people are now being left with nothing, no resources, no ability to sell their animals, and no ability to feed their families. Yes, I mean, on Raggy Omar's piece, I was really shocked to see that they, they normally have 18 million um, heads of cattle and goats and sheep in, in Somaliland and it's dropped 10 million have died. It's yeah. incredible. Already. Already, yes. So we were meeting people who had lost pretty much nearly all of their animals mm. by now. Some, like this little boy, his family had lost three quarters of their herd and they had about 25 heads left. So now they were obviously looking after these remaining animals very mm. carefully. Here you see him carrying his sheep down to um, yeah. a, what remains of a river to drink but it's unlikely that many of these animals will survive unless the rains come soon and it doesn't look like they're going to come. And this next picture, what, tell us what this is about. Uh, this is a woman called Amina. She had, I think, seven or eight children. They had lost their entire herd of over 200 heads of animals. They had been forced to leave the area where they were pastoralists mm -hmm. in search of food and water. They had congregated on an area... Um, east of the town of Barao, where other people had also congregated, but they had no food. So here she is showing me her empty cooking pot. She had no food to feed her children that day, and she had no money to be able to buy food to feed her children. And do we have another... Is this Amina as well? No, this is another lady. Mm -hmm. They'd also lost their animals. We found them living in an IDP camp along one of the main roads to Barao. The lady was showing me here what she had left to feed her seven children with. So she's got some rice, she's got yeah. some onions, they've got a few potatoes, and they've got some pasta. But once that food had gone, she wasn't going to have anything. That's incredible. And this, um, is that the same lady or a different family in this next picture? This lady's called Sara Mohammed. She had also lost her animals, the majority of their herd. They'd been displaced and come near to the town of Barao in search of food and help. Both of her children were suffering from diarrhoea. They'd gone to find medication for their children and bought it to treat the diarrhoea, but she didn't have any food to give the children mm. to take with the medication. So she was very concerned that if she kept on giving the medication to the children without food, it wasn't going to work. Yeah. This lady had also been displaced. They'd lost the majority of their animals as well. Her sister had died, so she, as well as having her own five children, she'd also taken on the care of five children that had belonged to her sister. So she now had 10 mouths to feed and they didn't have any money to buy food with. Goodness me. And so, and this child in a, is this child in a clinic? Tell us about where this is and what's happening here. This child was in what's called the stabilization unit in Barao um, Hospital. Stabilization unit is where 
women will take their children who are suffering from signs of severe malnutrition. Mm -hmm. It's where they are they're able to get medical support. And this child here had been put onto a stabilization program whereby he was being given food through a drip through his nose. Mm -hmm. Once he had been stabilized, he would then be given what's called plumpy nut, which is an incredibly nutritious substance mm -hmm. which comes in a small silver packet and mothers are given a supply of plumpy nut when they leave the stabilization unit for a month so that the child is able to get all the nutrients it needs yeah. in this one form. And we have one last picture here. This little boy is called Ede. He was a year and a half. He'd been in the stabilization unit in Hargeza Hospital. His mother had traveled two days to get him there in order that he could be treated. He had just come off of his um, drip feeding and he had just started his plumpy nut treatment. So um, view, people who've been watching these Facebook lives um, over the last few days will know we've spoken about the wonders of plumpy nut a couple of times and also about some of the amounts of money that we've been asking you to donate. So in the, the previous picture, not this one of Eid, but the previous one, you saw the stabilization units. and. Um, one of our um, asks, donation asks, is for £100, which can help provide supplies to a clinic like this for a month. So that is a picture of what would happen in one of those clinics where a child can be treated and, and it helps bring children back from very severe malnutrition. But in, in the case of Eid, we've spoken quite a lot about plum peanut, the, the peanut paste. £25 can, supply, can provide a supply of plumpy nut to a malnourished child for a month. As Kate was saying, this baby, Ede, will be getting that for the next month now that he's been through the therapeutic phase of his treatment in the clinic and his mother will be taking home for £25 um, will bring him back to health. So that is one of the ways in which your donation is helping um, in the East Africa crisis. As I've said, a uh, fantastic £30 million has been raised, but this is a crisis on a vast scale and we still need to raise more money. So let's uh, keep going and uh, bringing in more money and let's try and aim in the next week to double that amount. Um, so thank you everybody and thank you to Kate for coming in today.